Right. But see, <laughs> you're going to make us look stupid, and I know it. I know what you do. People yeah. come into your videos, they're all prepared yeah. to be taken seriously, and then you make us look dumb. Yeah, exactly. And we're not going to say anything dumb this time. Oh, we'll definitely so, say dumb things. You will not be able to parody us. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my as we'll just start with our normal introductions. Okay. Um, this is our first video filming of our podcast, which is quite amazing because we've been here for doing, what, like three years now? We've, we're in the middle of season three, so this is the first video, um, and if you like it, let us know. I think this is, could be a fun little format. So I think we mm -hmm. should say our opening phrase, right? Yeah, we can. Would you like to start? Welcome back to 10 and 20, official podcast of the Battle of Franklin Trust, where we talk about interesting aspects of Tennessee history in roughly 20 minutes. My name's Brad. And my name's Sarah. Today we'll be talking about... No! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be discussing and partaking in foods that um, are inspired by and derive from recipes that relate to the Carter family and the McGavick family. And we'll have a little bit of explanation along the way. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to go from what should be the tastiest to what we might think of as the least tasty. Exactly. But we are the first people trying these, so... So who knows? Yes. We might love, and I think there's a mystery dish at the end. So um, we're going to start with the peaches. The peaches, yes. So these are pickled peaches. They have cloves, cloves, and cinnamon. You can definitely smell the cinnamon and the cloves. Do you want one peach or two peaches? Well, let's just each do one at first. Okay. That sounds like a good plan. Oh, thank you. Um, and the the recipe for this comes from the Carter Family Cookbook, and it was put in the cookbook by who? Mm -hmm. Well, Emma Carter. Recipe it was okay, and Emma, it was by her granddaughter Betsy who put it in. Okay, mm -hmm. Emma Carter Bennett. Um, and these should be mm -hmm. sweet, yes. Okay, okay. I, I'm just gonna go whole peach. Okay, we're gonna go whole yeah. peach. It okay, go big or go home. <laughs> Ready? Okay, yeah, three, two, okay. one. Mm. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's, that that's really good. Yeah, that okay. like. It's like eating a peach pie without eating the crust of the pie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like a kind of holiday, like Christmassy kind of feel to it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. so far, that's that's really good. Yeah. We can come back to those yeah. if we taste something we don't like and need to, you know, refresh our palates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so far, that's really good. I think yeah. you should rate everything on a scale of 1 to 10. Ooh, that's a good idea. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't imagine that that could taste much better for what it is. It? Like, there might be foods that I like more than that, but for what the dish is, that's really good, so. I would say nine. I was going to say nine as well. Yeah. yeah. that's great. Okay. All right, what's next? Next up will be a blackberry wine, which is actually from Bell Mead Plantation Winery. And the reason we have chosen this, one, you like we can't make our oh, own sure. wine, but uh, two, um, Susanna Carter and Joanna Lytle. <laughs> Hopefully it smells good. It smells Wafting. Good. <laughs> so two women, Susanna and Joanna, were actually sisters. They were enslaved women um, who were owned by the McGavicks. And they both were born here, uh, from what we understand, at Carnton, were enslaved here, and then went up to Nashville. And they continued to serve descendants of the McGavick family um, at Belmede, the Harding and Jackson mm -hmm. families until their deaths. And the reason we've chosen this and their connection is that these two women actually submitted blackberry wines for what they called at the time the Colored People's Fair. And they, Joanna, won the premium certificate for that and her sister, Susanna, won like the second place. And so we don't have their recipes but we know that they actually made that and so it's pretty close, we think, to what they would have had at the time. And it is for sale at Bell Mead, yes, it is. which is where we got it. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, cheers. Cheers. Pinky out. Pinky out. That's for tea. <laughs> We're fancy here, too. Fine, pinky out. If you want to be fancy, hold your pinky up like this. Mm, very delicious. Yeah. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. it's, all, it's almost too sweet for me, but if you like sweet wine. Yeah, it's um, definitely. A dessert wine. Yeah, for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess it goes well with the peaches. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just have been blackberries anyway, so. It's very syrupy, almost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, yep. we finished. That's yep. good. 
Yep. Um, you guys can't make people laugh who have Y in their mouths. <laughs> I would say it's a little too sweet for me, but it is good. I would say that's a 7 out mm -hmm. of 10. I'd probably give it an 8. I, I like the sweeter wines. Yeah. So the next recipe that we have are actually the corn hoe cakes, which are in the dish right in front of Sarah. And so they're kind of like a Johnny cake. Some people refer to them as that. So or it's like a cornmeal pancake kind of thing. Okay. It's fried. It's kind of like a fluffy mm. Frito. Exactly. Interesting. So hoe cake fried, and fluffy Frito yeah. were both yes. nicknames of mine in high school, funnily enough. <laughs> So the recipe for the hoe cakes also comes from the Carter cookbook. So it's just one that they said was just passed down through the family. So this is something they definitely would have had, something very similar at the time of, of the Civil War, really early to mid-19th century, and really kind of a staple all the way through. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, I don't see how this could be bad, right? Yeah. Well, they're supposed to be hot, so... Oh. Mm -hmm. well, it's room temperature hoe cakes. Some, Oh, those are a little bit more than I have, was anticipating. We have to give a shout out to our coworkers who made all the food. <laughs> that, I'm just going to use my hands. Okay. I was expecting very malleable as I put the fork into it, and they're, no, they're not. They're fried. So these were made by Braxy, yeah. right? Yeah, shout out to. Whereas the peaches were made by Joanna. Mmm. You said mmm really fast. I like them. Yeah, I guess, I guess I have mm -hmm. to judge it not on its, like, current temperature. <laughs> Fresh out of the oven, though, I could see. Mm -hmm. Fresh out of the shortening. Oh, it was fried in grease, okay. Mm -hmm. They said, in lieu of shortening, you can use bacon drippings. Did you use bacon drippings? I did not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used a lot of Crisco. You know, it's, um, popcorn mm -hmm. flavor. I, I taste popcorn. popcorn. Mm hmm it's okay. made out of corn meal. Yeah, corn. Mm -hmm. Butter? No butter. No butter, okay. It's corn, flour, and salt. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. like, this is like if you took, if you went to the movie theater a week ago, and you got popcorn then. And, and then you put it in a blender? And you put it in a blender and just like mash it all together. Mm -hmm. And then you fry it. And then you fry it. <laughs> That's what it tastes like. <laughs> no, but like the butter, it does taste like movie theater popcorn. Yep. With that butteriness. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Hot would definitely be better. But, but I like the flavor. Mm -hmm. It's much easier than eating, you know, popcorn. You can get your hands messy. True. And you could, it's more sm smuggleable. Mm -hmm. You could get that into the theater easily. More <laughs> easily. <laughs> we can mark it. <laughs> Smuggle corn? <laughs> Smuggle corn. As an alternative to <laughs> the theater popcorn. Smuggle corn. <laughs> Maybe I'll catch on next year. This is what you'll be eating at, like, the new Avengers movie. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a fan of it. Mm -hmm. I would say that's seven. Eight, seven or eight. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Mm -hmm. We'll go seven and a half. We don't always have to say the same thing, but yeah, seven and a half, maybe hot, it might be even better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all right, what's next? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if y'all want to do the bread or sure. the chow chow. How, How could the bread, the bread be bad? I mean, it's just bread. Yeah. So, so all that is, so what I've done is just a simple limited need. Um, Freeform oh, loaf, so something really easy mm -hmm. that could have been done uh, right in the fireplace, right on a hot stone. Something very common, very simple in the okay. 19th century. This one does not come from a specific recipe, but just stay contemporary something for your palate to have a break. All right, yeah, yeah. I don't see how it could possibly be bad, but let's mm -hmm. go. Mm. That's good bread, for sure. That's good bread. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can save it to dip in the barbecue sauce. Mm. You have to try that later. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you can imagine, put that in the microwave for mm. 10 seconds, put Ooh. some butter on it. Ooh, yeah, that sounds good. Maybe some peanut butter on it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go back for another little bite. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's good. Yeah, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of bread, but, man, this is probably one of the best breads I've ever had. Nine. Mm-hmm. Nine. Nine. Yeah, good bread. All right, so our mm. next recipe Wait. is a McGavick family recipe. It is chow chow is what it's called. So mm. it is chopped up. It's really green tomatoes, um, and they're pickled. So you've got kind of that almost a relish texture, um, but it's not going to be as sweet. So it actually is a recipe that Carrie McGavick submitted for a centennial cookbook. 
So for the centennial anniversary of the mm -hmm. state of Tennessee, they had the Centennial Fair, which is where the, the Parthenon was mm -hmm. built and all that. Um, and they actually collected recipes for a cookbook that they published and she submitted. My thought is that I don't know if she personally was making it, but she obviously had enslaved laborers and people of color who mm -hmm. were actually working here as free laborers who had contracts with her. So it's likely that they were, in fact, the ones making it. Um, but, but she is the one who submitted that recipe in okay. 1897. Oh, you know, I did some research on this mm -hmm. one. Chow Chow is a very furry Russian dog. Hmm. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yep. There's going to be a picture of it right here. <laughs> <laughs> See, she's not going to put the picture there, so now you look dumb. She's going to put something stupid there. I know it. Uh, she's going to put a bad picture of me there or something. Okay. Of you in high school. <laughs> There'd be some funny ones. All right. Uh, okay, so what is it? What is Chow Chow? What's in it? So it's really like those green tomatoes... Um, I think this recipe might have some peppers or cucumbers, oh, so it's something you could have made with that produce from your garden, and this is a way to preserve it, to make it last through the winter months in canning it. So, hmm. so was this something they normally ate in the winter or in the summer? I do not know the answer huh. to that. But they, I, I would think either would be possible. Okay. But they just ate it straight like this, or would they put it on something? Okay. Oh, you just went mm. for it. Just right mm. to it. Mm. It's good. I think it would be good on something, but they ate a lot of pickled things in the 19th mm. century. So relishes, pickles. So I would assume this is something they would have eaten straight. I was very much prepared to not like this, <laughs> but it's not bad. No, it just kind of tastes like fancy relish. Yeah. I mean, of course, it tastes like a pickle, but I mean. Yeah. I, I like how you're eating it on the bread. I'm like. Yeah, I was like. And the utilize some of this delicious bread. Cloves in this as well. Yes. Yep. So a lot of a lot of herbs, spices, you know, to give it that flavor. Mm. Yeah, I'm surprisingly mm. not grossed out. That was good. Well, the last two things I think are going to be a little stronger. Way. Yeah, a little stronger in flavor. Uh, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, I think I had about enough. Like, I think it's like a you know a taste mm -hmm. or two, and you're good. Mm -hmm. So six, six and a half. Mm, I'd say maybe like a seven and a half for me. I'd eat this on a hot dog, like a good bratwurst. Oh, true. I didn't think about mm -hmm. bratwurst. Always think about bratwurst. That's what I, <laughs> mistake have, I always make. That's my motto. Do they have hot dogs then? Do they eat hot dogs? They had sausages. Okay. Yeah. They had sausages. Yeah, that's like basically bratwurst, right? Sausage? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? They had schnitzels. <laughs> okay, so far so good. I think this is all tasted pretty pretty good. Yeah, this has been good. Let's eat some more of that. Okay, so the final thing that's on the table is in the white little cup oh, up no. in front. I would suggest you give that a little spin and perhaps <laughs> take a piece of your bread and dunk it in. It is a barbecue sauce that was in the Carter family recipe book um, from Freddie Carter, who is the son of Oscar Carter. Now, Oscar was enslaved by the Carter family, um, and he was, we believe, in the cellar with the Carters the night of the Battle of Franklin. And so Freddie was his son, and he actually sold barbecue from his backyard. I mean, he lived down not too far from the Carter house. And it's believed that this sauce recipe came from his father. And so it's perhaps a basting sauce, perhaps a sauce sauce, but it is just described as a barbecue sauce. Okay. So it is a little stronger, um, so just keep that in mind. It smells definitely vinegary. Yes, it yeah. is. Definitely based in vinegar, but, but some, that would make sense. If some barbecue is definitely strong mm -hmm. vinegar. Like, I think North Carolina mm -hmm. barbecue, that's strong vinegar flavor, if I'm not mistaken. I One of the Carolinas. Straight, I don't know. All right. I'm not, I'm going to go, like, I'm going to definitely get. Okay, you're going to get a lot? Yeah, I mean, not like a ton, but I want to taste it. So. Okay, so you're definitely, like, soaking that yeah. bread there. I'll, I'll get a decent amount, too. Go for it. Go Should we dink? It. Is that sanitary? I mean, I just pulled this <laughs> off. I didn't bite it off. Sure. Dink. Okay. All right. That's just vinegar. Yeah. It basically just tastes like vinegar. That just tastes like vinegar. Well, it is largely vinegar, so it does have some spices in there, but, but that, is, that is it. On a, on a meat, I could imagine that would be fine. Yeah, once it kind of like soaks in a little bit yeah. and you cook some of the vinegar off. <laughs> 
if it tastes a little bit less like itself, <laughs> it might be fine. Um, I can imagine on a pork product that would be good, though. Yeah. I'd give it, like, a five because we're not probably using it, like, tasting in its entirety what yeah. it's supposed to be this for. This is the proper context for this. Yeah. But, yeah. Here, should I try it with the hoe oh, cake to see if that's a different idea. flavor? <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you, like, you like tried it so like quickly. Hmm? You guys said you agreed to try it again so quickly. Actually, that's mm. pretty good. Mm, that does. combination. I was eat um vinegar on your French fries, which I do. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. All right. So the final mystery recipe. I have over here, and we will bring that out. Um, we'll let the you probably know what this is, isn't it? <clears throat> speak to that recipe. <clears throat> <laughs> James doesn't want to. James has been on the podcast uh, before. Yeah, multiple times. <laughs> <one. laughs> so, what we have here is tomato aspic. Which is just a name you call something if you think it's going to be delicious. Mmm, <laughs> aspic. So, I it's <laughs> really... It's like tomato jello. Yep. Uh, no. Really. And so so we do have some of that special. Special. <laughs> You're really just telling us there. One yes. thing I do know is that jello like things or gelatin like things used to be way more popular than they are mm -hmm. now. Absolutely. And combinations of like savory and like gelatin mm -hmm. things were way more do common. You want to put a little piece of bread to melt out the taste? No, I, I think we just got to go for it, right? Okay. <laughs> um, for all you viewers, listeners out there, the reason why we picked this. Is because we already know Brad absolutely hates it. Uh, James made it once before, <laughs> and I was not a fan at all. So, but we agreed to take a big bite. Yeah, we did. It's from the Carnton cookbook. It's it straight from the Carnton cookbook. Okay, I'm better get I am mic. not excited, but I think Braxy almost threw up <laughs> just <laughs> looking at it. Okay. Can you, get a, can you really zoom in on that jiggle? Is it celery as well, or just olives? All right. Try all right. It. It goes out easy though because mm -mm. it's slimy. Mm -mm. <laughs> Did you, are you chewing it? <laughs> Ugh. Oh, that's gross. Oh, oh, wait, man. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I didn't really, I didn't really taste it because I basically just swallowed it. I'm like, you're going for a second bite. You go, you're going back? Okay, it's not terrible. Like, <laughs> it's not terrible. <laughs> Well, that's because I was laughing. Yeah, you were literally <laughs> crying right now. <laughs> that's because I was laughing from the joke oh. before. Oh, terrible. Oh. Yeah. Um, I might have another peach. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. You know, here's my problem with this. If it was hot, it could be an okay flavor profile. But cold mm -hmm. and gelatinous, it's not good. If it was hot, it would just taste like tomato soup with olives. It kind of does. Yeah, like a little bit spicy tomato soup. Yeah, but cold and gelatinous. Yeah. I would give it like Consistency and heat level are are important when you make food. And this I'm giving it a five. Two. <laughs> I didn't throw up. I'm actually impressed that you A you didn't throw up and B you didn't spit it out. Those are good though. Yeah. The peaches, um, yep. these are top notch. Yep. Alright, so what did we learn today? Or is that that's everything, right? Mm -hmm. What did we learn today, Sarah? We learned that it's really fun to have to test food to yep. work. We learned that some things are good, some things are bad. <laughs> some yeah. things stand the test of time, like peaches and cloves and cinnamon. And hoe cakes. Actually, most of this was pretty mm -hmm. good. It's just the aspect. aspect yeah. But that I didn't was like. really. And, and the vinegar, because the vinegar could be good if it was. Yeah. You know, like. And it's proper kind. Oh, barbecue sauce. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Um, mm. All right, well, if you enjoyed this, let us know if you want us to try it again sometime. I've had yes. a good time. I've had a good time as well, so. And I know for those of you, you might be listening to the audio only, um, definitely watch the video on the mm -hmm. YouTube channel. Yes. Um, but thank you so much for watching. And tune in in two weeks for another episode. Good. How do you feel about tomatoes? Fine. Okay. You're We're on doing a, a collage of staff members trying the aspic and getting your reactions to it. Yes. Aspic? Yeah. Here is a the aspic. Okay. Sarah and I took a pretty good size yeah. bite as well, so. Ooh, I think that's oh. bigger than both of ours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Francis, do you want to try aspic?
for the video? You don't have to. Oh, not really. Okay, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Sounds good. Mike, we need your help. James made this dish. It's called Tomato Aspect. Will you try it for the video? But you got through it. I survived. I hate that stuff. Are you sure this isn't poison? I, Sarah and I both tried it. So did yeah. David. Sugar in it? It's gonna kill my blood sugar. No, that's no. well, just tomatoes. It's pretty sure it's just tomatoes and horseradish and olives. It's right there Is for it you. Up here? Oh. No. Damn. This is exciting. Actually, Have you had it? She loves Not it. This. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. What would you rate it? From... Out of ten. Out of ten. Yeah, out of ten. At well, an eight. Ooh, that's a really? Nice. Running Whoa. So hard. <laughs> we we only get to eat it if we have to be filmed. You only get whole cake if you have aspic. I don't know about that. That's the rule. Yeah. What is this? Is this ketchup? You're just a silhouette. Is this ketchup? Oh, no, no, no. There's a fork there for you. Oh, Trey. man. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's a culinary thing. That's right. Trey will be, yeah, Trey will be like green like after he tries it. You want to try a hoe cake? No. Come on. No. Okay, who wants to try it? Go on. Those don't Chill. We drove it's all the way really over here. It's really not that bad. I'm not trying the red stuff. That looks like spaghettios that got left for way too long in the can or something. Oh, that's an old bite? <laughs> yeah. Something in there. Are those there. olives in there? Yeah. Oh, gosh, it's just so like. Oh, that's not bad. See? It does taste like cocktail sauce. Does it have more sugar? It does have more sugar. From I'm one to ten, ten what's your rating? Mmm. In general, I'm general tonight. Six? Six? Okay. Six. What is the higher one? Uh -huh. Lori said eight. Yeah, Lori said eight. Okay. But she said she didn't have it. <laughs> What's your rating? My rating of all the tomato aspect I've ever eaten. Six, six, five. Yeah. I'm, okay. a, I'm a tomato fan, so. I'm a tomato fan. Praxi, your turn. Oh, gross. Yeah. Your turn. Oh. Danielle, get in there. I thought you were staffed at it. I won't hold on to you. Well, are you going to sue us? No. Okay, then you're good enough. Give me a wedding. It tastes like cocktail sauce, but I don't like it. Um, out of ten, out of ten. Yeah. Let me tell you how my mother served. She served it with a dollop of mayonnaise on it. 